We're going to continue our study, Meditation, the Key to Your Success. With ev in every person alive, there lies the power-packed ability to imagine. The human imagination is an inspiring and motivation force. As we practice meditating on God's word, the inborn creative power of God will be released from our spirits into our imaginations. Genesis 11:6, it's a tower of Babel. And these people were not born again, but God said, whatever they imagine, they will be able to do. We having the spirit of God, having a sound mind, having the word, much more, much more can we as children of God do. So the purpose, we're looking at the purpose of meditation. We're going to get to how to meditate, but the purpose of meditation, and we'll go to Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. We're just going to read the one chapter. Eventually we'll get to more of that, but Joshua 1, 8, the purpose. It says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Meditating in the word of God will make our way prosperous, and we will have good success. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Who wants good success? Amen. And prosperity, it comes from meditating in the word of God. The word talks to us. It'll talk to you in the nighttime. As you get that word in you, it'll talk to you, it'll lead you, it'll guide you, it'll direct you. But we are to observe to do, observe to do. We saw in James chapter 1 that we're to be a doer of the word. And here Joshua was told to meditate in the word day and night, and if he didn't do that, if he didn't meditate in the word, he would not have been prosperous and successful. So we sometimes, I know we are... Children of God, the minute we believe in our heart, confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ died, went into hell, rose again, is seated at the right hand of the Father. And we say, Jesus, your Lord, come into my heart. Immediately we're children of God. The grace of God is his power beyond our natural ability to do what he's told us to do. But if we don't get into the word to find out what he's telling us to do, how are we going to know what to do? He gives us the power to do it, and by faith we apply the word of God. So sometimes we think, well, I've spoke the word, I've meditated the word, I've done this, I've done that, I've done all these things, I should have. You don't have because of your good works. Hello. Hello. And we start looking at ourselves and what we've done as opposed to Jesus and what he's done and by faith receiving the grace, the power, the ability to do what he's called us to do. We become self-focused. That's the biggest problem. We become self-focused. And we turn our walk with Jesus into a religious exercise saying, I've gone to church, I've gone to prayer, I've gone to Wednesday, I've spoken tongues, I did this, and I did this, and I did this. And when you're in that mode, the devil will say, ah, but you forgot this. So you go, oh, and so you do that. And then he'll say, ah, but you forgot this. Don't forget Jesus paid the price. He is the only person ever that was able to keep the law and do everything perfectly. And he did it for us. But we, of our own free will, meditate in the word so the Holy Spirit can show us what to do. Then we release our faith to do it, and the grace and power of God clicks in to make us able to do what we could not do on our own. Hallelujah. We've got to understand that. We've got to understand the power is in the word of God. So we do, but by doing, we do what the word tells us to do, and by faith we do it, and the grace of God enables us, and that's the power of God. Amen? Amen. So we had looked at that, and now I want to go back to Jeremiah 17, because that's where we, we looked at Jeremiah 17 last week, but there's a few more things I want to pull out of there. And um, I also realize, 
As I was saying it, I knew it didn't roll off my tongue quite right. You know, I remember somebody once said that when they made a mistake in what they said, their tongue got wrapped around their eye tooth, so now they couldn't see what they were saying. Well, I didn't see what I was saying, and I knew as I was saying it, it was wrong. However, I had someone come up right away and tell me about it, and they wondered if they could pull it off of the CD. But I said, where when I was talking and said, Dust, Blessed are those that believe, even though they haven't seen. And I mentioned Andrew. Well, we know it's not doubting Andrew. And I knew when I rolled it off my tongue, it was wrong. So everybody, yes, you're right, I was wrong. It is Thomas that did that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, we've corrected that. But let's go down to Jeremiah 17. Hallelujah. Next time, as I'm saying something and I'm not quite sure, I'll just and not even say it. You know, that's always the best thing. Jeremiah 17, we're going to start at verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusts in man. Now, we had talked about that and we had said that the man is cursed because of what he's doing. He trusts in man. He's trusting in sense knowledge. He's trusting in what he can see, hear, smell, taste with his natural being. We call that a carnal or a sense-ruled person. He's walking according to the way the world operates. He's walking according to the highs and lows of the world system. Who trusts him and makes flesh his arm. Makes flesh his arm. He's trusting in man. That's what that means. It's trusting in man whose heart departeth from the Lord. Meaning his thinking and believing and trusting God to get him out of the situation is gone. It says, this is what the Lord says, cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans and turn their hearts away from the Lord. And I'm, I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but I'll mention it this week. The reason they're cursed is because their heart is trusting in the world system. Satan is God of this world. And so the minute you're not trusting God's system, you're trusting in the world system. And the world system is cursed because Satan is God of this world system. And if you're trusting in the world system, you're cursed because you're trusting in a cursed system. Okay, so it's not that God's reaching down and cursing you. God is not a curser. He doesn't have curses. He doesn't do curses. He only does blessing. So that's why this person is cursed. Verse 6, for he shall be like. He shall be like. The um, Young's literal translation says, and he has been like a naked thing. Do you notice when Adam and Eve bowed their knee to Satan, they realized they were naked. The glory wasn't there. The power wasn't there. The anointing wasn't there. When you're trusting in God, the world system, when you're leaning to the arm of the flesh, you're like a naked thing. You're without the glory. You're without the anointing. Because you're not believing God. You're not pulling on the grace of God to put you over. So it says, he's like a naked thing in the desert. He's like one. He isn't one, but he's acting like one. To like, it means a way of acting. So he is like a naked thing. Or in King James, it says, he shall be like. He shall become like the heath. He shall become like means a way of acting. Like also means the same characteristics or qualities. When we no longer trust in God, we become like what we trust. We become what we meditate on. Which is why as we meditate on the word of God, we become more and more, our thinking is more and more like him. Because we know in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 28, God said, I will make man in my, what? Likeness. Image likeness. 
likeness. I want them to act the way I act, behave the way I behave, do the things I do, because then he said, and he blessed them. Blessing is an empowerment. The blessing is exactly what he spoke after that, which is to be fruitful, multiply, replenish. Subdue, take dominion. The minute you turn from God's way of being fruitful, be, being multiplying, and being replenishing, taking dominion, and exercising your authority, you're now walking in the world system. You are taking on the likeness of the world. You're taking on the likeness of what Adam bowed his knee to, which is Satan, which Jesus paid such a huge price to pay for us so we don't need to be that way any longer. He shall be like. He will have a way of acting. His way of acting will be the same as the world. And we're not to be that way. And only meditating in the word of God will change that. It'll change our soul realm. Because you act according to the way you think. Because then your emotions get going and you will do that. So whatever you're meditating on, whatever you're thinking about is the way you will act. And the way you will behave. An inhabited, a parched place in a wilderness, a salt land not inhabited. King James again, for he shall be like. He will start acting like a heath in the desert. Now this is interesting because he is acting like an, a, a person of the world. He's acting like someone that doesn't have God. It says he shall not see when good comes. Notice, good comes. Good comes. It says there, he won't see when good comes. He won't recognize it because his eyes are on the world system and he's expecting it to come to him the way the world would get it to him instead of the way God's going to get it to him. Um, New Living Translation, they are like, they behave like a stunted shrub in the desert. Well, there's no fruit, there's no substance. With no hope, they will live in the barren wilderness. But I want us to see this. Meditation, the purpose of meditating is so we change the way we think, change the way we operate, that we will operate. It says to be imitators of God as dear children. We cannot imitate somebody we don't know. And the minute we're born again does not mean that we know our Heavenly Father and what he's like and what he will do and what he has done. And we will not see good when it comes. I've had people say, I don't see any good. Because you're not seeing it through the eye of faith. The eye of faith only sees good all the time. Because we're blessed. We're blessed. So he doesn't even see when good comes. It's beyond what he can do. And so he just sees parched in that land. Now it says in verse 7, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Now read Deuteronomy 28. I'm not going to read it this morning. I thought I would get into what the blessings are and what you've been redeemed from. We went into some of that on Wednesday night during healing school. But you'll have to read it because we don't have time this morning. But blessed is the man. Now you've got, he will be like a tree. He will be like a tree planted by the waters. It doesn't say he is planted by the waters. They're both in this, part, this land, both. Here's the tree growing, and here's the stunted shrub. They're both in the same place. One, because they're trusting God, they're like this tree, and they're producing the other because they're working according to the world system. And the economic system of the day says it's a famine. So they've just received that and they don't even see good coming. They're both together in the same place. This is where we are to get to the place where the world sees us and says, how can this be? 
The whole office is sick, but you're not. How can it be? How can this be? How can you be prospering today? How can it be? How can these things be? We're both together in the same place. One's depending on the world system, can't even see good when it comes. The other man is depending on God's system, and he's put his roots down into the word of God. Do you know what? We're not going to go there right now. But it says the man reaps 30, 60, 100-fold. The one that does not have the word of God stolen from him is the one whose roots go down. And Ephesians says we're to be rooted and grounded in the love of God and nothing will destroy us because love never fails. Financially, in healing, in any area of your life, The minute your roots go down into the love of God, you cannot fail. Well, this is the blessed man. He put his roots down. And he got to water. What's water? Washing of the water and the word of the word. The word of God and water are often used interchangeably. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We see when good comes. Amen? Amen. Now, I want to go to a scripture here just to show you about famine, that you can be blessed. It doesn't matter what our economic system is, that that these two people, these two trees, which are referring to people, one was like naked, couldn't see when good was coming, and the other was blessed, even though it seemed like famine. Let's go to Genesis, chapter 26. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Genesis chapter 26. And verse 1. Genesis 26 verse 1. I'm reading out of King James. And there was a what? Doesn't that sound like what we just read about in Jeremiah? There was a famine in the land besides the first salmon. Salmon. Hmm. All right then. Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you. I mean, you don't have to run away from the famine. How many know when you've got God with you, everything good's going to come your way? It's just going to come your way. You don't have God with you, and bad things happen. Moses, later on, he said to God, don't send us out there unless you come with us. Don't send us out there without your presence. How will the people know You're our God if you're not with us. Why? In his presence is everything you need. And that's the glory. Well, God's saying to him, I will be with you. I will, he said, I will be with you. Jesus said, The Father is going to send the Holy Spirit and he will teach you, guide you, direct you. And he said to him, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God said, I will be with you. Jesus could have said it the same way. I will be with you all the time. You've got him with you. You've got him with you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And I will be with you and unto your seed. I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Who's our father in the faith? Jesus. The promise was made to Abraham and his seed. And then in Galatians says it's not meaning many but one which is Christ. The promise of Abraham was given to his seed Jesus. And we are heirs according to the promise. So what God promised Isaac was because of his oath to Abraham, we sang about covenant, and that's why we have it. 
because Jesus is the seed. And we're in that. Hallelujah. The same promise that God's speaking to Isaac is to us. And then it says, I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Who's the seed in which all the nations of the earth is blessed? Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And why? Why? Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge and my commandments, my statutes and my laws. It wasn't because of what Isaac did. Notice this. It's not because of what Isaac did. He says because Abraham obeyed that Isaac got it. It's because Jesus obeyed that we've got it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But now notice, Isaac had to do something. God's telling him, I'll be with you because of Abraham, because of my oath, my covenant to Abraham and to his seed, and his seed is Jesus. Because of his oath and covenant with Jesus, God's saying he'll do this for us. But now he's saying, you've got to do something. We've got to believe. We've got to allow him in. We've got to trust him. We've got to do it his way, not the world's way. So then and Isaac dwelt there, and the men of that place asked about his wife, etc., and he lied, and it went on. And now let's go to verse 12. <clears throat> Verse 12, then Isaac sowed in that land. Now remember, there was a famine there. It was a famine. But he sowed. He's doing it God's way. In that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. There's the blessing. He's like that tree we read about in Jeremiah chapter 17. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. And then tells about all the stuff he had. And Abimelech noticed it. And he says, go away from us. Get out of here. You're too blessed. They got jealous. He didn't realize he's chasing the blessing away. Now what happens? Here's the blessing. And you're, you're, in, you're, you're working, say you're in this company and, and you're working and you're the blessed. And so because you're there, things are prospering in the company. But so are you. And now they start getting jealous of you. And eventually they fire you. And then you leave. But when you leave, the blessing goes with you. God didn't curse those people, but they kicked out the blessing. Always remember, wherever you are, your purpose for being there is to be a blessing. That's your purpose, to allow the blessing of God to bless other people because it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. God wants everybody to see and know how good he is. We don't want to, I mean, you know, people go around telling them, you better do this or this is going to happen or God's going to bat you upside the head, all these things. They don't want him. They've been struggling with this for ages. Their whole life they've been struggling with it. Satan's been trying to kill them. Now you're telling them God's going to kill them. No, he wants them blessed. He wants you to show forth his goodness. He, it's the goodness of God that will lead to repentance. Always. Who wants to serve a mean, ugly God? Why do I have, I'm already serving one. These people think, oh, I'm already serving this. I've already got enough grief in my life. Now you're going to tell me about a God who's going to add more grief to my life. And if I make a mistake, he's going to make it worse. He's going to put a plague on me. Make sure that when you tell anybody about Jesus, about your heavenly Father, that it's always good. What he does is good all the time. So now, <clears throat> verse, um, so anyway, they kicked him out. Let's go down to verse 24. 
Now we saw that the blessing was on Isaac, why? Because of Abraham. The blessing is on you and me, why? Because of? All right, verse 24. And the Lord appeared unto him, unto Isaac, the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, I am with thee. And will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my why. Why is he going to be multiplied? Why is Isaac going to be multiplied? Because of Abraham. For Abraham's sake. Why are we going to be blessed and multiply? Because of Jesus. And you can go back because of Abraham's obedience. That's why. That's why. It's because of Jesus. We've got to understand everything we have, it's been given to us. Before we became children of God, before we confessed and asked Jesus, we don't confess sins to get born again, we confess Jesus. Amen? Amen. And so every ability and talent that you have was given to you before Adam ever sinned before the foundation of the world. So you might say, well, out of my own hard work and ability, I bought and got all of this. No, you didn't. If it wasn't for the gifting put in you, God said he formed you in your mother's womb, you would have nothing. Nothing. Now that's just that much when we get born again, we've got now, we learn how to operate in God's system, and it's just multiplied. Some things we gain as we're born again, various talents. But there's some things you were born with. An example is there was this piano player, two piano players, raised in the same home. Both of them played, one better than the other. That was a natural gift given to them at birth. Singers, piano players. One went the way of God, dedicated his life, used his music for God. The other went the way of the world. I don't know if any of you, this, this is, I don't want to even give his name because this is going to really date me. Dave's dated us enough already. But the one that went the way of the world is Jerry Lee Lewis. Gifted. He didn't lose that gifting. He used it to serve Satan. And he got into the drugs and, and his life was a mess. Had money, but his life was a mess. His cousin served God. So you have a gift that he didn't, Jerry Lee Lewis didn't make that, give that gift to himself. It wasn't because he was so good. It was given to him. Appreciate the gift in you. But realize, always realize, it's because of your heavenly Father that you have what you have. It's because of Jesus that you have what you have. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you're exalted, it's because God lifts you up. If you exalt yourself, you're going to fall. Hallelujah. So anyway, Isaac became blessed for Abraham's sake. It's because of Jesus that we're blessed. But notice, Isaac had to do something. He had to plant his seed. And then the guys came along and stopped up his wells. And they chased him away, and then he, they stopped up his wells or took over his well, and, and, and he named him because of the conflict he was in. But he never went and killed all those people. He just let him have the well. Because God was with him. He went and dug another. And dug another. Let those people be blessed. Well, eventually, as you go on in that, at one point, they realized that Isaac was still flourishing and the famine was still there and they weren't flourishing. So they say, hey, come on back and we'll make a covenant with you. We need you back. Come on, come on. We want you back. They wanted the blessing back. So they made a covenant with him, and he went back, and they got blessed. 
teaches us something about walking in love and forgiveness. Being a blessing. Hallelujah. So it was because of the promise to Abraham. We're going to look at one, another scripture here. No, we're not. We'll just, um, we'll end there. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The reason, the re, the, well, I'll read verse 27 in chapter 26. Then, 26, and Abimelech went to him from Jair and oh, Ahuzath, one of his friends, and Phicol, the chief captain of his army, and Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing you hate me, and have sent me away from you? And they said, We saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. Why ever did they come back to him when they sent him away? They saw the Lord was with him. The blessing will draw whatever you need, and it will draw people. They will see that the Lord is with you. We saw that the Lord, certainly the Lord was with you. And we said, let there be now an oath betwixt us, even betwixt us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee, that you will do us no hurt, as we have not touched you, and as we have done unto thee nothing but good, and have sent thee away in peace. Thou art now the blessed of the Lord. You are now the blessed of the Lord. The world saw it. The world saw it. Hallelujah. When we operate in the way God tells us, seek first the kingdom of God, kingdom, domain, God's way of operating, doing what God says to do, meditate. The purpose of meditating is to observe, to do what God said to do. Then you'll make your way prosperous, and then you'll have good success. And God said, I will go with you. I will be with you. Jesus said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. 